What is good? What's good is we're about to get into some Najee Harris. And we appreciate y'all if y'all just clicked over over on the mock. Here we are. We did it. We got a little video going on for you. We want to talk about whether or not this was a great pick with the Najee Harris or if it was a terrible pick with the Najee Harris. Um, so if you're joining us from the mock, we appreciate y'all. If you're finding us on the solo video here, let's get you up to speed. Uh, we, we appreciate y'all too for checking us out. So uh, we're in a mock draft, uh, non-super flex tight end premium uh, with the patrons here. Uh, Click this link here. So and, we got uh, we got you know mock drafts going on every week with the, with the patrons, and then we got the live mock drafts that we're doing. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Uh, but let's get into how this thing panned out, and let's get to how we got to this uh, separate video discussion. We want to take a little more time and, and break down some Najee Harris. So the one one Christian McCaffrey, the one two Dalvin Cook, the one three Jonathan Taylor, the one four. Saquon Barkley, the 1-5, Alvin Kamara, all running back so far. Then here you got the 1-6, Cam Akers. We talked about on the regular mock draft, if you didn't watch it, that, you know, whether what to trade for at the 1-6 and whether or not that's an automatic trade back spot. Uh, so go check that out. Big Co breaks it down. Then, you know, our uh, Jay Wayne here takes DK Metcalf at 1-7. Um, then we have Tyree Kill at 1-8, Nick Chubb at 1-9, A.J. Brown at 1-10, and 1-11 is Najee Harris the guy we want to talk about here? So, basically, we want to talk about when to take Najee Harris. According to DLF ADP, they want you to take him at the back half of the second round, like almost into the damn third. 21, what was it? Where is Najee? He's at 21, yep. RB at 13. RB 13. I'm going to say with the old Lee Corso, not so fast. <laughs> I think this is a good pick at 111. Now. Absolutely. Um Again, we go back and talk about it at the one six. Like I'm trying to trade back. I'm trying to get into this zone here. I want to get out of the first two rounds with two running backs if I can. I'm not scared to take DK Metcalf or AJ Brown per se, uh, but I really want to get green boxes here with sleeper. Those are the running backs because it gets super fucking dry after the third or after the fourth, fifth round here, and then I can just rack up uh, receivers through the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh. Like I can take five in a row and and. You know, feel yeah. like I'm getting good value there and good receivers. No wet ass running backs in nah, the fourth, just, fifth round. We call that the dry zone because it is darb, dry, dry ass, ass running, running backs. backs. Um, now, hey, I'm not going to be mad. Lube. I'm not going to be mad if I start my team with Anchor and DK Metcalf and AJ Brown and then go two running backs if that's how it ends up playing out. But that's not how I'm always going to play out. So I'm going to try to do my best to get two running backs and to do that. I feel like you got to want you want to get back to the back half of this first and the early half of this second yeah. um, to well, do some damage. Let me get two picks in that 10 to 16 range for right. sure. Which is why in that 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8 range, I'm going to be trying to move back. If you can get to 111, great, where he was, where uh, A1 Damasta ended up taking Najee Harris. I think that 111 spot. Now, see, D Devontae Adams goes 112 next to him if you're not in front of the mock draft board here. Um, and obviously, if Aaron Rodgers is around, Aaron, Devontae Adams is an absolute stud. He's going to absolutely crush. He's a wide receiver one. I think you, and he's just absolutely outstanding if Aaron Rodgers is out there. But there is a little bit of a issue right here. So I'm probably going to want to take the running back over Devontae Adams here, which is a sure bet if Aaron Rodgers plays to be awesome. And then we got this block of sophomores, Antonio Gibson, DeAndre Swift, Dobbins, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I want to get one of those two guys or two, basically, what I want to end up with is is two of, of those five, six guys with Najee Harris adding into there, and Ezekiel Elliott is also in that range. Right. So this is a perfect spot to go ahead and double up on running backs near the back half of this draft. Absolutely. And we're going to... Cat, we're gonna jump right into a sophomore uh, running back video after this one, and I'll throw I'll throw I'll retroactively throw a link up there for you guys to click on that because we're gonna discuss kind of what order to put those sophomore running backs in here. But we're talking strictly Najee Harris right now. Yeah, so uh, you know I'm I'm not upset about that pick at all, and I know right. you're not either. Take take Najee Harris wherever the fuck you want to take Najee Harris. Basically. I think that's perfectly said right there. Yeah, I mean. If, if you're really feeling some type of way and you need to get another running back in this one six one seven one eight range and you want to take Najee Harris? I cannot argue with you at all. I could do that on a random day. I could take Najee Harris one six. I probably won't take him that high because I don't think you have to. But I could, and I can't be mad at you if you do. 
Yeah. Basically what I'm trying, like I said, you get from, from one ten to like two, five or six, where all these running backs are, the Chubbs, the Harris, the Gibson, the Elliott, the, the Clyde, the Swift, the Dobbins. I want to end up with two of those guys and I don't really necessarily care who it is. We're going to talk about how we have those sophomores broken down and how great of a value Zeke is in the actual mock draft that we just did. The sophomore video, like Jay Wayne said, is going to be a little separate, but Najee Harris, you know, I just, I'm not going to be upset. I think this is, there's a nice block here where, and if you can get Najee Harris after any of those picks, like DLF is saying the, the 21st or 20, like it's holla cheating. fucking Lula. That's cheating. You, how about <laughs> holla fucking Lula? What? Hallelujah. I was trying to throw Hallelujah. a fucking Lula. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so let's let's just get a little bit. Of, let's br- break into a little. But isn't Najee that offensive Harris line here. so terrible? And James Conner so terrible? How can Najee Harris ever be? Needed? Right. So let, let's just get a little brief where Najee Harris lives and where he should be. We're kind of telling you how we feel about him in the section where you should draft him in. But let's let's just break down Najee for a second here. So the Steelers obviously they get a new offensive coordinator. Matt Canada takes over as offensive coordinator. Um, what that means, what his kind of deal is, is they're going to be a little bit more under center stuff. There was some shotgun, a lot of shotgun with Ben Roethlisberger, but Roethlisberger says he's fine under center. He's going to be more motion, uh, pre-snap in that offense, catching up to the 21st century of how offenses run so they can run some of the same plays, but make them look different, which is a lot of what the Rams and the 49ers do kind of that. And a lot of other teams in the league, but famously those guys, um, a lot more play action and some boots and movement of the QB moving them around. Does that all sounds great. Does, does Ben Roethlisberger's arm? No, worry. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think you're going to see 144 Deontay Johnson targets, but, um, I think, many I think I think that's, that's because uh, basically using him to have a have a run game. Uh, I think Najee Harris comes in. They drafted him for a reason. They drafted him. This is coming from the top. The Rooney's basically saying from the top down, hey, we need to not be so predictable. We need to be able to run the ball. So we took a first round running back and a guy who can catch the ball, can catch these dump down passes, can, you know. He can run routes, man. He can can, run routes with the best of them. He can levitate into the air and contort his body to that back shoulder fade, high pointing it drink at the highest point in the air. Like, Najee Harris is a fucking stud in the receiving and game. also just a just a thoroughbred in the actual between the tackles run game right and then you want to talk about how they can't get him out of the damn building like he's such a hard worker they're like buddy right. you, you need to get these home. are all small parts and pieces when you can get a guy who with the work ethic and right. the he's knowledge got it up here. and right and he's he got wants, it all he wants here. to be great right and he's smart he works fucking hard he keeps his head down He's just, he's just fucking phenomenal. So again, take Najee Harris wherever the fuck you want to take Najee Harris. And if he can get him later than the second, halfway through the second, awesome. Holly fucking Lula. You look, damn it. <laughs> Thought I was going to get it the second time. Didn't get it. Good for you. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's get into this offensive line real quick. I don't want to bore you with too many details, but I like to get into the offensive nuts and bolts here. line talk. Oh. Um, so the Steelers were one of the worst run blocking units last year. Uh, but somehow people are upset that they're, you know, now they're so bad because there's all these guys that are Holes. gone. Like, dude, they were terrible last year. So I get it. Like, all these names were stalwarts of this good offensive line dating back to the Le'Veon Bell years. And when Connor was healthy uh, a few years ago and everybody was on him, great. Now Connor's trash and all this. But. You know, let, let, let's just quickly recap through this terrible offensive line and how terrible James Conner is, what his fantasy points were doing in 2020. Um, he had 3.7 fantasy points the first game, but after that, he had 20, 24, 15, 17, 14, and 15. Uh, and that was through eight weeks. So, listen, James Conner gets shit on because everyone thinks he isn't great. Well, there was a time in college where he was up there with some of the elite college prospects. Then he had all that crazy cancer stuff. And now he has that shit. He's been on and off the field. But look, he was on the field and healthy and absolutely slaying it. Uh, and we've seen him squad. slay it before last season. He Absolutely. took over for Le'Veon Bell, and it was like a seamless transition. It's probably part of the reason why they were like, fuck you, Le'Veon Bell. So doesn't doesn't finish the season super strong, but neither do the Steelers. Everything kind of falls apart. They become predictable. They stop giving the running game any sort of love. So now they want to come in here. They want to retool this offensive line, rebuild this offensive line. It was shitty anyway. So what they're doing, they got Kevin Dotson, 
a player who everyone is excited about in Pittsburgh. Dotson, Dotson, we got Dotson here. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> um, Zach Banner won the job last year. He was generating some serious hype in Pittsburgh before he tore his ACL in the opener, so that put the, the brakes on that. Um, obviously, David DeCastro just got cut. He was the most familiar face of that line still hanging around, but he battled injuries all last year and wasn't in mini camp. so they're saying he's a strong candidate to retire. But then you get in a, in a you know, a, a corresponding move. They signed Trey Turner, uh, who came off a bad season with the Chargers last year, but prior to that was a Pro Bowl. He'd been in the Pro Bowl multiple times. He was with the uh, Carolina Panthers before that, and he said he's hoping to return to form. He had some COVID and some injury stuff last year, um, but he's been really working on himself, working on his game. This is a great move by them uh, to go ahead and pick up a veteran here to, to fill a hole. And he, they had already been kind of talking about this when I was researching this beforehand and DeCastro wasn't cut. Turner was high on their list anyway. And maybe this was why, because you didn't know this was happening. I think that's a great move for them. Turner can be a good player. And then they, to, to round this off, they have uh Okora four, who was a left tackle. Um, and he's fairly athletic guy, but could be a wild card played right tackle for banner after he went down. Um, and then they spent two draft picks on offensive line. And from what I read from the internet, a lot of people saying these were good values, some blue check mark guys who are a lot more involved in what the offensive line is and grades and who had good value. Uh, they're saying oh, it's so boring. There's some excitement brewing for Kendrick Green, who was a center taken in the third round, and Dan Moore Jr., a tackle taken in the fourth round. So that, you know, that gets them to rounding out this line here and then they brought back um some depth in bj finney who they cut last year finney. but familiar with what they have going on in there <laughs> finney. um so that you know whether it's not, not it's a great offensive line, no, it's probably not going to be one of the best units, but it was terrible last year, and this offense is still going to be good. They re-signed everybody. And James Conner was just fine. James Conner was just fine for stretches for at least the first half of the season, and they were 11-0. and Right. Defense falls apart. Whatever they're doing falls apart. The offensive line falls apart. All sorts of things happen. And from what you read and everything you go through, of course, you know, it's off season, so every, everything's roses and whatever, but... You know, they're saying this this line is preaching physicality. They're going to be dominant and they're liking what they're seeing from it. And it's a cohesive group and they're all in this together and they're really liking what they're seeing. So what you know, they could be bottom third in the league of, of offensive line play, but this offense is going to be good. The defense is always good. Tomlin's never had a losing record. Right. Um, That's so, crazy. Shout and, out and to Najee Tom. isn't coming off the field. Najee is absolutely 100% going to be great in the passing game. They have Snell. They have McFarlane. Baby. We like all those guys, but... Baby. Najee's a different breed. Najee is is a, a, a head above James Conner, even though James Conner was at the top of a lot of rushing lists in college before he got uh, cancer. And But Najee Harris is just a completely different animal. And they drafted him to not come off the field and not be so predictable and pound the rock. Najee's going to get plenty of work and going to be great in the passing game. And like you said, he has everything that you want to just work hard, be smart, know where he needs to be. He's not going to be... Uh, fucking up out on uh, out there right. on the field, making bonehead plays. Right. He's going to put in all the work. He wants it. He wants to be great. And that's a formula for greatness. They had to tell him to get out of the building. They huh? did have to tell him to get out of the building. So, like, 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 Bubba, you need you to just chill out for a minute here. Just go, settle go down. Home. Go home for a second. Go here. home. Now, this is Dynasty, so there is some long term. Roethlisberger probably not back after a year. Haskins in the building great move by the Steelers there I think there's all the tools are there for sure he um, just doesn't have it up here which but what a better place to get right. it right up here and that's all I read what Tomlin is talking about is we got to fix the man we got to know the man we got to meet the man I got to you know figure out what who this man is and what he's about and then we can work on the other stuff and Haskins says that he's very appreciative of all this and, and, and really likes where Tomlin's at and that he actually cares about him and that he's in a place that actually wants him where he didn't feel like most of the staff in, in Washington already had, you know, they didn't want him. Right. Uh, so, you know, everybody wants to be wanted. Yeah. Um, I didn't want but you to Haskins want me. also had some issues. So, you know, I Nobody like. Nobody wants to do dishes. <laughs> if, I would have brought you seven. I want you, I brought you want. I would have brought you seven fucking lemons. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was me. <laughs> Underrated Vince Vaughn movie right there. Yeah. The breakup's so strong. Well, you just know what's going to happen based on the title, and I don't want <laughs> Doesn't wanna, even matter. I want the guy to get the girl. Jennifer you know? Aniston's in it, and and yeah. Vince Vaughn is just 
fantastic in that yeah. movie. So the bottom line is, like we said at the, at the top of this, draft him wherever the fuck you want. He's going to be great. The Steelers are a good organization. While we may have a quarterback issue, I think we're rebooting this line. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about how shitty the offensive line was last year, fine. If you want to talk about how they're rebooting it and it may not be that great this year, fucking fine. But, but a not great matter. running back scored great fantasy points for over half the season. Right, there. and Najee is a fucking freak. He's a freak athlete with, who has it up here. The Steelers are going to be good. They're never not good. Tomlin's never had a losing record. They're always in it. Their defense keeps them in games. They're going to move the ball down the field. They have studs at wide receiver. You can't stack the box against him like it's just set up for success and if you want to make an argument for one of these sophomore running backs okay i can hear you right. i don't know I'm exactly not, what to do i'm not necessarily that. saying that you need to take Najee over all them either i'm just saying in that block right there where right. that back half of that first to second round absolutely snap up all the sophomores and Najee, zeke and and chubb that's yeah. what i want to see happen that's where i want to live i don't necessarily have a, a, an exact spot where all oh, you got to take him over this guy but right and if I have one of the top five picks and I take one of those top five running backs and you let Najee slip to me at the end of the second round. Oh, what that's the f- not that's even that's just ridiculous. It's just cheating. It's right. cheating. That's ridiculous. You want to give me him at 21 as the RB you can, 13? You can bet your ass by the end of summer. He's going to be he's just going to keep climbing those ranks. And and let's 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 not get it twisted here. He's not going to be RB thirteen at twenty one in your home league. In your home league, where you and your boys and your friends, you all fucking want to win. Yeah, money, big money leagues. They're you're taking drafting the all running, those back. running backs, all that. They're stuff. taking the running back. They aren't Agreed. worried about this productive struggle and trying to yeah. win down the line. They're fucking trying to win. Yeah. Najee's gonna go, and you and and I don't want to miss out on him. No, nah, I can't get wait to Najee. take him at one one in a rookie draft. Mm-hmm. And that's me being a Clemson dude, you know. I, I mean, I I gotta get some Travis. So if I have to take Travis over over Harris in one league, I'll do it. But I'm not, I'm not telling any of my listeners to do that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, you can't lose. Take him where you want to fucking take him. Subscribe so you can get the live mock drafts when they come out and, and when we're doing the, the hour-long picks with the patrons and we're walking through a longer mock draft like we just did where all these videos are kind of coming off of. So hopefully you're subscribed. We're doing a, we're right about to tier, tier up all these sophomores and give you a breakdown of their situation and kind of where we like them today. Uh, could change tomorrow. Uh, so subscribe. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. We'll switch to redraft here near the end of the summer. Uh, so we appreciate y'all and uh, just make sure you get all that stuff right to your little fingertips. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let, you know, let me help you help, help me help you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're on, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, be so kind. Let me get a five star review. iTunes, Bobby, Stitcher, whatever, whatever you're listening to us on. Hit us with a little love. Or, hey, if you're just listening on a podcast and you're not a YouTube person, I don't have time to watch YouTube videos. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like on the go. I need to listen. I'm, I'm more of a podcast guy. Go over to YouTube. Let, let, let me get like a thumbs up. Hit me with a comment. <laughs> you know, I help your boys out. You guys support us. You're there for us. We appreciate you guys. Listen, let's not pretend you guys aren't all have some dumb shit where you're, you know, just got a lot of downtime. So just go over to YouTube, watch a video or two. Let me get it. Let me get a comment. Tell me where you think you should take Najee Harris. Tell if you think we're dumb. Hit us with some love. We love the love, man. Any, any of you guys throwing comments out there about we love the show, we appreciate the, the knowledge and the info and the hard work. I love the hate, to too. Light. Me. If, you, if you're hating, tell me why you're hating. I'll, 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 I'll break you off something. All right. But really appreciate that love. It keeps us going. Um, and just can't, and as, can't I mean, say thank you guys enough. So As always, trick love to kids. <laughs> All right. You got anything else? No. Peace.